What's up folks? My name is Kendra Vandruff from Kendra Vandruff Watercolors. Today we are going to be painting a landscape of Great Smoky Mountain National Park. I absolutely love this park and the style of this painting. I cannot wait to show you how to paint your own mountain landscape with pine trees and the different varieties of blues. It's going to be so much fun. So without further ado, let's get painting. Let's get started on our mountainscape today. I just mixed some paints gray with Prussian blue into my mixing palette and I'm going to add a few brushfuls of water directly into it just to dilute it a little bit. I want to get a lighter value to this hue and we're going to start with our first layer of mountains and it's going to be lighter than the rest of them. So the first few layers gradually just get darker as we get towards the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and start painting some jagged mountain lines here. Using the same color, I am just going to add a wash of it. With the mountain lines, you really want some jagged, irregular brushwork for the silhouette of the mountain. The more jagged and irregular, the better. And then with this line here, I'm just going to use some plain water just to help soften it so that way it's ready to go for the transition of our next mountain layer. Okay, so once this first initial mountain layer is dry, we can go on to the next. I'm going to deepen this blue color with some more Prussian blue and Payne's gray. I'm going to start doing the silhouette of the next layer of mountains. Just like that. And I, I'm going to take this color here and saturate this layer of mountains. And while it's still wet, I'll just rinse my brush off and just add some water all along this edge just to soften it a bit more. You can even go in and add some more of the paint just to make tops of the mountains pop a little bit more. Let's go ahead and let this next layer dry before we go on to the third layer. Now that our second layer of the mountains are dry, let's get started on our third layer. So to continue to darken this blue, I'm going to add some more paints gray and some more Prussian blue into my mixing palette. And now at this point, I'm going to kind of mix it up with the form of the mountain range. I kind of want this one to kind of start to slope downward and then maybe go up again here just to mix it up. So this one doesn't have as many larger mountains, the ones above it. I'm going to go ahead and saturate a nice wash of this blue and then I'm gonna rinse my brush in water again and just apply some water to help soften this edge a bit more at this point I'm just gonna let this third layer dry and we will add a fourth layer of the mountains next and then after that, we're gonna layer some pine trees. So I'm super excited, it's gonna be beautiful, cannot wait. 
Okay, so now that our third layer of mounds has dried, we are going to add our fourth and final layer. So this will be the darker of the mountains. So I'm gonna add a good amount of Paints Gray and Prussian Blue. You know the drill by now. So I'm gonna just slowly add this next layer of mountains and we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. We are going to end this mountain range area just short over here because we're going to actually place a cute little tree popping over in this area. Okay, so while this is still wet, I'm going to quickly switch gears from my size 18 brush to my size 2. And I'm going to get a little bit more paint gray. And I'm just going to do some very loose, kind of just interpretive silhouettes of pine trees on this layer of mountain while well, it's still wet, so that way it can kind of bleed into this area. So just very loose, kind of almost like little triangle silhouettes here. So you could literally actually paint like a tall skinny triangle like this, fill it in, and then just use your brush here to just give it some irregular edge marks. You can kind of elongate it if needed. That's a good little shortcut for these pine silhouettes. Do one over here. Maybe this one's taller. So just keeping it really loose, starting with you know, the trunk is another way to start, and then just adding some irregular brush strokes on the left and right side of that trunk line. I'm going to go ahead and add a few more on this side as well. Maybe this guy's going to be taller. Okay, so now that we have added this amazing layer of pine trees, I really just love how it's starting to come together quite a bit. While this dries, I actually want to add some birds flying upward in the sky. So I'm just going to use some plain old Mars Black. And I'm just going to mix that right into our blue blend here. And I'm continuing with my size 2 brush here. Here we go. And for the birds, I'm going to put some in the white area of the sky. It's quite an overcast day in the Great Smoky Mountains in this painting. So for the birds, I like to do some rounded flat V shapes. Keeping it simple. And I'm going to have some that are small and some that are larger than others. Maybe do a couple down here. Okay, love how this, this just moves your eye throughout the painting. All right, so now what I want to do is finish this off with some details of some maybe two to three larger pine trees mixed in to the front of our painting. So I'm just going to mix some plain black 
up with our blue mixture here because I want this to be popping. So to start, what I'm going to do is do a line to indicate that this is our tree trunk here. I need a little bit more paint. There we go. And then from there, I'm going to paint some really delicate upside down V brush strokes. And the reason why I'm doing that is these are going to be our guidelines for our detailed bristles of pine needles on our pine trees. If you notice here, I start small and I gradually grow wider following the shape of a cone almost throughout this pine tree. Okay, so after I get the base for this guy, I'm going to then start layering some almost like eyelash brush strokes on the tops and the bottoms of each of these branches. And I'm going to layer them quite a bit. You can even add some of those brush strokes alongside the trunk. So again, doing some of these kind of wispy brush strokes on both the bottoms and the tops of each of these kind of branches from the upside down V's that we painted earlier. Don't be afraid to continue to layer if your tree is looking sparse. Okay, next I'm going to do maybe a couple more pine tree silhouettes that are more detailed, just like this one. I'm going to do one smaller one right to the left of it. So I start with the line again. I might have this one poke up just right to the second layer of mountains there. Then I start doing some upside down V's and they gradually get wider as I go down following that cone shaped silhouette. And then I'm just going to give some eyelashes to my tree, as one does. <laughs> and I'm just going to continue to layer these on the tops and the bottom. Okay, so we have a little gap here. I kind of want to fill that with something. Just want to put another little pine tree here. It's not quite as large as the first, but it's going to really make the foreground pop. For this last one here, I'm going to kind of make it slightly big. It's going to be off towards the edge. Now to my favorite part of the painting, just kidding, but one of my favorites. We are going to start peeling off the tape. Now 
Was that not satisfying or what? Love peeling the tape off. Thank you guys so much for joining me today to paint this great smoky mountain landscape. I love the variety of valleys of blue that we have in here and how your eye just loves just going through the rest of the painting with the birds and the pine trees below. So pretty. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, I am offering a discount code off of my website to purchase this original painting. You can get 10% off at checkout with code KB Watercolors. Thanks again for joining me and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.